Good morning. Welcome to a morning edition of Mornings with Stanley. I am running a little late. I have an errand I have to run this morning, so I'm not going to go to the office before I run the errand. Um, so, oh my goodness, I could not wake up this morning. What was up with that? Maybe I need different music to wake up to. I have this big band, soft, big band music. I mean, I shouldn't say big band, but, you know, old 30s and 40s music is coming on. And I just, but that's not, I woke up in the middle of the night and couldn't sleep and finally went back to sleep and then I just could not wake up. I was in, after my alarm went off at 6.30, I didn't get up till 7.15. What was up with that? <sighs> so I've been running late all morning. We didn't get a walk. It's kind of cooler today. Only highs are only supposed to be in the 50s. My watch says 57, but when I asked Alexa a few minutes ago, she said 53. So I don't know. Somewhere between 53 and 57 will be the high after yesterday in the 70s, days before, a couple of days before in the 80s. I prefer the 80s, I've discovered. And I said last few weeks ago, I like winter. And I do. But the thing about Texas winter is it just is up and down, up and down, up and down. When I lived in Virginia, it seems like we put our coats on in November and we wore our coat every single day until March. I don't know if it's still that way. I know the climate's changed a little bit, but um, here it's like you put your coat on one day and you wear shorts the next. <laughs> it's really, you know, when it's like that, you really do end up, I think, preferring the, sh the warmer weather, though I'm not a big fan of 100 degree weather that we have in even 90, really 93 is about where it really gets miserable to me. So it's just amazing how cool 93 feels when you've been like 106 for, for a month or six weeks. Anyway, got Stanley here, Lucy. I tried to feed her. She wouldn't eat this morning. I don't know what's up with her. She's not feeling really good or or what. But she's she's outside. I think it's harder for her to jump in and out the dog door now. Last night after our walk, I was sitting in the recliner and she and she's been doing this more. She'll just kind of scratch the door instead of coming through the the um, the dog door waiting for me, hoping I'll open the door for her. And I usually do if it's, I mean, I think it's good for her to, to do that exercise. You know, it's going to be, a, I don't want it to get to the point where I have to open, stand up and let her in and out all the time. But, um, but it might get to that point. She is an old dog. Today is my parents' 60th wedding anniversary. They were married in Houston, Texas at Terrace United Methodist Church. I guess it's just Terrace Methodist Church in Houston. And um, where they were members for a while before. And then where I was baptized. I was baptized at, and my brother was too. Of course, he's older than me. And then we moved our membership to a church that was in our neighborhood. And that's where some of you who are familiar with the Central Texas Conference, I know um, Gary Lindley, he was youth director at the church where we were members. So he doesn't remember us and we don't remember him, but he did preach at my mom's funeral because he had that connection and, and he's a good guy. I like him a lot. So anyway, now I'm going to put Stanley out because I have to get on the road in about six minutes. <laughs> you don't want me to get on the road, do you, mister? Okay, let's get this over with. We've been helping a guy and um, um, for several months, and um, he's getting an apartment today or we're looking at an apartment so I should be moving in this weekend and I'm giving getting giving up the bed frame and headboard it's 
and my parents has a king size bed and somebody else has a king size mattress and I'm giving her my futon that Stanley kind of chewed on the armrests, arms of, but he's going to get a brand new mattress for that. So that'll give him something to sit on in the living room. And we're working on getting other stuff. Anyway, here is our reading for today. It's 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verses 2 through 4, though it ends mid-sentence. So I'm going to go on and read verse 5 too. We always give thanks to God for all of you and mention you in our prayers constantly, remembering before our God and Father your work of faith and labor of love and steadfastness of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. For we know, brothers and sisters, beloved by God, that he has chosen you, because our message of the gospel came to you not in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit and with full conviction, just as you know what kind of persons we prove to be among you for your sake. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. My watch kind of, oh, it's telling me I need to, to um, exercise today. <laughs> I will later. Here is our, I'm not sure these smart watches are the most wonderful thing. They interrupt you, <laughs> for one thing, and I don't know, they nag you. <laughs> okay, this is Thursday of week 43. Round the clock tutelage of the spirit. This school of the spirit set up and operating within in the depths of the personality where the total person is under the round, the clock tutelage of the spirit makes, the, makes other methods of producing maturity seem outward, mechanical, and amateurish. Take Gnosticism. Salvation was to be gained by climbing the ladder of 36 steps to God by inward knowledge. But that knowledge or gnosis did not include the body. This high knowledge was consistent with low morals. Gnosticism collapsed from that dualism, a house divided against itself that could not stand. A pillar of the church committed adultery. Brought before the, ju before the judge, he was asked, How could you, a pillar of the church, do this? And the man replied, Oh, the old Adam did that. And the judge replied, Then I sentenced the old Adam to nine months. That happened on a wide scale in regard to Gnosticism. Life said to it, I sentence you to extinction because of your dualism. Take modern psychiatry. It, too, undertakes to cure maladies of the personality through knowledge. Jung says psychiatry has four steps. Confession, explanation, education, and transformation. The two middle steps, explanation and education, are scarcely able to produce the last transformation. It can produce alleviation, reformation, realignment, but hardly transformation. In the school of the Spirit, there are four steps. Confession, self and sin surrender to God, acceptance by faith of forgiveness and reconciliation, reconciliation to God, the Spirit, and transformation. The first three steps are capable of producing the fourth, transformation. For in confession, everything is brought up and out. Complete honesty. In self and sin surrender, there is a transfer of the central allegiance from self and sin to God. Complete recentering. In acceptance by faith of forgiveness and reconciliation, there is a wiping out of all barriers between the soul and God. Hence, there is transformation. For God's power, now free to operate, transforms the honest, the surrendered, the receptive soul. Here's our prayer for today. O oh, gracious teacher and transformer, I bring to you confession, surrender, and acceptance, and I find from you transformation. And since the transformation is from youth through grace alone, then humility is of the very essence of this transformation. I thank you. Amen. And our affirmation for the day, I am under the great transformation. I belong to it and am becoming it. Jesus is Lord.